Hi everybody, Jacob Reed here from ReviewEcon.com. Today we're going to be looking at question number two from the macroeconomics exam from 2019, set two. If after watching this video you still need a little more help, head over to ReviewEcon.com and pick up the total review booklet. It has everything you need to know to ace your macroeconomics AP exam. Let's go ahead and get into the question. Now for part A, we're going to start off with the assumption that we have a current account balance of zero and there's going to be an increase in real income within the United States. We have to explain the impact of that change in real income on that current account. Is it now in surplus, deficit, or no change? And we have to explain. Now the first thing we need to remember is that more real income means more imports. That's because more money and more wealth means more purchases of everything, including things made in other countries. That increase in imports is a debit in the current account. So what will that do to the current account? Identify it as a deficit because, there's an explain point here, higher real income increases U.S. demand for European goods and U.S. imports increase as a result. Have an explanation that's something like that and you've got yourself a point. The next thing we're going to do is draw a foreign exchange market for the euro and show the impact of that increase in real income in the United States. Let's start off by drawing out our axes and label that x-axis there as the quantity of euros and the y-axis as the price of euros in dollars. Draw out our demand curve downward sloping, our supply curve upward sloping. We should mark our equilibrium exchange rate, PE is what I call it here, and our equilibrium quantity of euros as QE down there on the x-axis. Now, as we saw earlier, the increase in national income within the United States is going to increase the amount of imports. That means U.S. importers will have to sell U.S. dollars and buy euros to buy those European goods. That increases the demand for the euro in that foreign exchange market. Shift that demand curve to the right there and make sure you show the increase in that exchange rate and the increase in the quantity of euros. And if you draw your graph out looking something like that, you've got yourself some points. Next, we're going to assume that the interest rates within the European Union increase. And now we have to identify and explain the impact of that increase in interest rates within the European Union on the demand for the United States dollar. The first thing we have to remember is that foreign investors seek higher interest rates. Since we have higher interest rates in the European Union, foreign investors will seek those high interest rates and they will abandon the interest rates that are lower in the United States. That will decrease the demand for US dollars. That's because foreign investors are seeking the higher interest rates. So they demand the currency with the higher interest rates and they demand less of the currency with the lower interest rates. So say decrease because the higher interest rate in Europe will decrease the flow of financial capital into the United States. Answer it something like that and you've got yourself your point. Now based on our answer in CI, a decrease in demand, we have to say what the impact would be on the value of the United States dollar. Here's what the graph would look like. We have a decrease in demand and you can see there that exchange rate on that Y axis decreases. As a result, all you have to do is say depreciate and you've got yourself a point here. And there you have it. If you got all of that right, you are on your way to acing your next macroeconomics exam. If you want a little more help, head over to ReviewEcon.com where there's lots of games and activities to practice the skills you need to know to ace your macroeconomics AP exam. If you still need a little more help after that, make sure you pick up the total review booklet. It has everything you need to know to ace your macroeconomics or microeconomics exams. Thank you very much. I'll see you guys next time.